pretty much taken out everything. We do still have the swamp, which is hut, but I'm gonna save that just because it's annoying to do. Anything over here. <gasps> A fight! Yay! Orcs, arguably even more vicious than Cole has, but not a threat. God, it fascinates just amazing. Tread lightly. We could just skip days until we have an advisor for you to rank up, but it's like, or to do stuff with, but it's like, I mean, you might as well just explore what you can. Take the time you have, you know. Another random encounter? That was quick. I like it. Victory! Gobbos. Not the gobs. Oh, sorry guys, something got my eye. Gobbos. Let's see what we can do. Gotcha. My skill succeed yours. Easy. Goblins ain't shit. So much exploring. Nice. Good job. Valerie. Love of people. Do we have enough this thing? No, we still don't. But we could. Wait. It has to be Valerie. Okay, cancel. We'll come back. I think we can get the, the cane lands now. Let's do it. I don't know why I went to the town square. I'm so used to going there to sell stuff, but we have a guy in our throne room that can buy stuff for us now, so. I don't have to do that anymore. I feel tired. All oh, right, this thing.
Wait, I want you to meet someone. Here, this is Tessie the Quill, a book peddler. If not for her, I'd probably still be sitting in a radish patch in my hometown. Tessie, a plump woman wearing heavily patched clothes, greets you with a broad, gap-toothed smile. Nice to meet you, you barony. Thanks for keeping an eye on this little tot. How did you meet Lindsay? Went through her village from time to time. Weren't many buyers. I was lucky to sell half a dozen calendars each year, maybe a couple cheap vulgar prints. Then, a priest from the capital went to live there, and he got the young people interested in reading little by little. Some would ask for romance stories, some wanted heroic tales. Well, one day, this little tot came by and traded her father's belt, two bottles, and a hunk of bread for a two-volume collection of legends about the Arknights of Avistan. Came back later all tear-stained, looked like her daddy didn't need the belt after all, so the sniffles at so she sniffles at me and says, Take me with you, I can help, and looks at me like a lost puppy. So I took her along. Why not? And that's what got the ball rolling. Will you be staying? Me? Not really sure. Probably for a while at least. The people here seem fine. They read at least. Then again, there is a printing house here, and I get to catch up with Lindsay. Hadn't seen her for a few years, you know. After I get tired of things here, I'll be on my way again. Who brought you here? Little Bird told me about a proper city in the Soul Lands now, one with the printing house, with an old friend of mine sitting in that printing house at that. So I came by to see her, maybe buy some books while I'm at it. Friends! Gonna do it. Dun, dun. March, 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 march. Yes. We got it. Treasure, Doomsayer, General. Excellent. And now to put the town somewhere. here. We have to go visit so we can talk to the artisans. This guy. <sighs> Judging by his flared nostrils and furrowed brow, something has upset Jihad greatly. Your Grace, I have here one of your subjects. He goes by the name Remus. We caught him spreading false prophecies, sowing fear among your people. The old man before you is clad in tattered rags. His gray hair and beard are filthy and matted. Judging by the smell, he has not bathed in some time. Sorry, guys. Perhaps years and you have 
perhaps years, and you have to fight the urge to cover your nose. Oblivious, the old man picks at his beard in silence, as if trying to catch lice. You're not certain he even knows where he is. As if that wasn't enough, this Aristotle, forgive my words, prophet, blasphemed against the deities, proclaiming we must bow to some false god. At the mention of God, the old man shudders and his eyes go wild, almost feverish. The goddess will rise from the forest, from the swamps. You've cut down her trees and drained her marshes, but she will take no more of this. Fall to your knees and repent. She will grant you a swift death. Your grace, you have to deal with this madman. I'm the only sane person in this city. This hideous, ugly city. Its stone buildings claw into the soil and think themselves safe. But the sky shall open, the earth shall tremble, and this city shall crumble beneath its pride. Aristotle, have mercy. Will you be silent, you fool? And another word shall swallow the ugly city and its careless dwellers, and only the rain hall, the rain shall weep for the emptiness left in this place. We've met already, remember? Seems he's at a loss. Let's talk about your prophecy, Remus. What is this other world you speak of? A different world, fierce and wild, where mountains impale the sky, where rivers change direction, where the very trees talk to the stars. This wild world will consume this city, shape it in its own image. It will be the end of all. Tell me about this goddess. Her fury is like a river after a storm, her voice Thunder in a summer sky, her touch as cold and sharp as a silk sliver of ice, she is beautiful as a dream. It's been forty years since I last longed for a woman, but her. How do you know that? The goddess showed it to me in my visions. She whispered about a beautiful new world, told me she would heal nature's wounds, but I don't want it. She must be stopped. Sacrifices, we must offer up sacrifices, goats or cows or horses, that will be enough. It must be enough. So, an angry goddess will lay our city to waste because we drained her swamp. She must be a petty goddess indeed, if she takes part in the affairs of mortals even on such insignificant occasions. Perhaps you simply had a dream and it merely seemed real. But, but, Remus's gaze becomes clear for a moment. His shoulders slump as he looks even older now, more tired. Maybe you are right. I... I need to lie down. Praise be Aristotle. Is that a glimpse of reason? I thank you, your grace. You have returned this poor man towards the light. I'll find him a place to sleep and make sure he's fed and sent back where he came from once he wakes. I think we should expect no more trouble and no new prophecies. Ah, yes, our general. Well, Atlas, it's me again. Our army is growing. We got more soldiers, but not enough commanders. And there aren't no clever ones among the recruits. Without good command, you know, you can't run an army. In some armies, the officers are wizards or shamans. They might be brainy, but they don't know a damn thing about soldiers. But when I was in Bravoy, I see those, you know, sword lords, right? They look skinny, but they know their weapons and soldiers look up to them. I think we should hire them to be commanders in our army. They'll definitely have the troops' respect. Sure thing. Right, fine. I'll go tell the others what you said. Booyah. I came to discuss something that rulers love more than the sun in the sky, and subjects hate more than the plague. That thing that fills a state with strength. That golden honey that diligent bees carry to their master's treachery. Yes. I'm here to discuss taxes. Nobody has any more doubts that your power is here to stay. No one has any illusions that your throne will be knocked over by the first gust of wind, or that these lands will ever be open to the gangs again. And that means your subjects are ready to hear the heavy, wear the heavy yoke of taxes. Of course, some will grumble, but that's to be expected. We'll first spend the taxes of the obedient on pacifying the ones who rebel. You've done a fine job seizing power. Now it's time to enjoy its fruits. I suggest we double the taxes. We're going to raise them by one third. Just a third? 
Such caution is commendable. Sometimes raising taxes can lead to riots. But believe me, your sheep aren't starving. They have much more wool to give. You don't want to go against your advisors too much, but I'm just going to do a third tax. <laughs> uh, greetings of grace by tradition of a really... Oh, he's giving us the stuff. Put everything else aside. Give me your armor. I want it for my collection. What do we get? This is for bombs. And that's a really cool freaking shield, man. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Light shield. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Please. Jubilost. Here you go. Extra bomby damage. Nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and build some stuff here. A wooden wall. A long house. A bulletin board. And that's what we got <laughs> for now. All right, we're gonna save before we do more rank ups, but I think we can get in a couple rank ups before we close out today. So let's do it. Economy. Cool. Nice job. Nice job. No, we don't care about him anymore. Ugh. Okay. Devastating raids, livestock deaths, troubled lands, counselor awaits, visitor awaits. Who can do this? Who can do this? Who can do this? Okay, so we're good. Let's do you. Ooh, you. And of course, I chose the wrong ones. Let's cancel that. Um, yeah. She can handle it. Then we have visitors. And then we'll close out. Cool, nice, good stuff. Your grace, I demand justice. Crime in the barony is on the rise. In open daylight, I was tricked, robbed, and if that weren't enough, humiliated. A gang of local thugs tricked me into trusting them. They found out about my possessions and disappeared with my treasures. I sent them to the island Candlemere some time ago, and they just vanished into thin air. I beg you, find these scoundrels and retrieve my treasure. I'll pay a handsome sum to be sure these villains are brought to justice. You don't seem like a local. Why would you keep possessions of yours on the island in the middle of Candlemere Lake? Candlemere Lake? Well, <laughs> you see, these aren't exactly my possessions right now. It's just, I learned from the locals about the ruins of an ancient temple on the island. And everyone knows, where there's a temple, there's always the hope of some treasure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you believe that some sacred relics from the temple of an unknown deity belong to you? By what right? By the right of finding. I dug up all the stories about the temple, I hired the crew, I pointed out where to start to search. Besides, no harm done. No one ever really goes there anyway. There aren't many volunteers willing to visit a cursed island. 
Oops, I'm just talking gibberish. Heard some gossip somewhere, and here I am spilling it out all in you. It's nothing, your grace. Just a big fat load of nothing. Some empty talk about someone sacrificing someone else there, and as for the ghostly lights, I'm sure there's a rational explanation for that. Same with the flash of light over the ruins. What ghostly lights are you talking about? The lights were strange, you know? They were brighter than fireflies in different colors. You can see them even from the shore. During the day, they're barely visible, but at night, people say they're the restless souls of those who meet their deaths on the island. I know nothing. Really? I, yeah, I don't have a knowledge, magical knowledge. <laughs> you mentioned a flash of light? I saw it with my own eyes and just recently almost blinded me, like half the island suddenly burst into flames. When the locals saw it, they fell to their knees and started to pray. They said that the old god had returned. Dimwits, what else would you expect from them? Says the king of dimwits. I guess that's all I need to know about the island. Who are you? Willis Gunderson, your grace. I'm a scientist, an explorer, an adventurer, and a renowned expert in treasures and artifacts in virtually every era and culture. So many titles for a single piece of mediocrity. S Sir Narthrapple, you're, you're here. What a nice surprise. Oh, really? In case you hadn't noticed, I've been here from the start. Or perhaps, you, after the open lecture in the Foray Logos in Absalom, you'd lost not only the rest of your mind, but also your eyesight. I see your manners haven't improved since we last met. Well, happily, I no longer consider you the beacon of knowledge you once were. You can joke however you like. I'm, sub I'm above such discourse. The only thing that puts you above me is your size, Willis, and even that isn't so impressive for a human. I'll f figure it out. Yeah. Sure. My responsibilities require me to focus on the most important problems of the barony. Meanwhile, less important issues, particularly relating to culture and art and education, are left unattended. The only way out I can see is to find a curator, one who may deal with these nuances and free me to focus fully on our more urgent affairs. There's a man from Galt here in your land seeking asylum. He's different from the other sorry refugees, fleeing Galt's unending flames of revolution. This one used to have his own newspaper press. Today, all he possesses is a lingering ambition and the plans for a printing machine. You probably guess where I'm going with this. Much can be said against Galt, but not for its lack of technical progress. I believe that founding a printing house in the capital run by the experienced manager would reflect well upon our overall population's education and enlightenment. Besides, as patron, you would control what would be printed on this workshop. But we have Lindsay's shop. With all due respect, Lindsay is far too creative to manage newspaper publishing. It demands certain discipline, which I am sure this publisher from Galt possesses. Ah. Uh, we won't. I understand. You don't want to trouble with Galt's authorities. Who knows what hundreds chase this refugee? Your decision is quite reasonable. I shall do as you say. Just going against all the advisors today, I guess. Uh, Culture. Uh, we'll do the storyteller, that would be cool. Okay. And I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of look orange. It's just like the game lighting. Uh, but, okay. So, uh, what's going to happen next is we're going to take care of some of the side quest stuff, build up our new town some. We got a lot to do and a shorter amount of time to do it before the next chapter starts. So, we're going to try to get as much done as we can. Um, remember, in this playthrough, I'm not going through every single side quest, every single location 
yada yada yada. I'm not doing a 100% playthrough. This is simply a chance for me to kind of explain how certain things in the game work, certain mechanics, certain parts, for you guys to experience kind of what the game's about. But I don't want to go into everything because I still think it's cool for everyone to kind of just like discover that with themselves. Uh, when we do Wrath, I'll do as 100% as I can for my first time, uh, which will be exciting. But for this one, I'm not going to, especially since I've already done it and I don't feel like taking all of that time to do it again. Uh, but yeah, we'll be, we'll be doing a lot, but not, yeah. I don't know why those were there. Um, but not everything, so. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And can stay on or t just continue watching to see where this game goes. It's looking cool. I like the Oracle. I like the Shaman. I like the Occultist a lot. Going to be awesome to continue it. So see you guys around in the next one.